morning majority on 6 to 707 on WMAL. Good Tuesday morning to you, Brian. Even Tony Blankley in this morning. Good morning. Lieutenant General Tom McInerney joins us now, Fox News military analyst. And General, I tell you, the more I read about this mission, um, the mission to get bin Laden from the interrogators who got information out of detainees to the CIA work, NSA, the president giving the okay for this mission, which was a gutsy decision, and then Special Forces, Navy SEALs, Team 6. I mean, the more impressed I get, it really was an amazing feat, and I think one that we can all be proud of. No question about it, Brian. I mean, it was absolutely brilliant, as you talked about from the trade craft, as long as it took to work this out and through the human intelligence, through the interrogation policy that uh, the Bush administration had to include waterboarding that divulged these little tidbits of information that eventually became quite a mosaic. Uh, it was absolutely brilliant, and, and we really ought to commend everybody from the president right on down. When you, when you look at it, um, the, the getting rid of the body is, is somewhat of a controversial thing right now. And I want to get your take on whether or not that was the right move. Or why do you think they did it that way? Well, there is a little bit of political correctness. Uh, I'm not quite sure why we want to honor this guy with certain religious rights, which uh, to me just credits the rest of the radical Islamists. Uh, I think we should have uh, done it a lot slower. I think we should have had some prominent people look at his remains in addition to senior military people so we get rid of the conspiracy theorists. And uh, I think this was easily doable. Uh, so I don't know why this rush to judgment. But the fact is, is I'm, I'm nitpicking. Mm -hmm. uh, the important thing is, is we got him. It was done brilliantly. Uh, I just would have disposed of the remains a lot more differently. Any doubt in your mind that Pakistan, that the intelligence, that perhaps the military even knew that bin Laden was in this compound? Well, absolutely the military knew. Now the question is, is who in the military? It's a big military, it's a big government. It's like our government, uh, it's a big government, big military. So the fact is, is they knew. But our listeners must remember, Brian, and, and Tony knows this very well, Pakistan is the one that created the Taliban yeah. when the Russians left Afghanistan as a counter to the Indians having influence in Afghanistan. So clearly, until the Pakistani government, uh, whether it's ISI, their intelligence security apparatus, or, or the government itself, quit supporting the uh, Taliban, we can't win in Afghanistan. I mean, uh, I'm going to take this because it's a very important point. Our strategy in Afghanistan cannot be successful unless Pakistan says we're going to quit supporting the Taliban and the different franchises there, like the Haqqani Network, et cetera. We, we are in a bottomless pit, and let's admit it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, General. Can I go back to the operation the, uh, again? I, I'd be curious, how does it actually technically get set up for the president's decision? Uh, I assume, obviously, the national security advisor is the coordinator. Is he given, like, take even the question of, of the burial at sea, would that be like a list of, you know, three or five different things to do and, and different agencies make their arguments? Uh, or, or do they make, or does there a common recommendation up to the president and he says yes or no? Know, or do you, how typically would that happen, or have you heard how it did happen in this instance? Well, I'm going to uh, make a few guesses based on, uh, on experience. Clearly, this was a CIA operation. Mm -hmm. They did the primary collection of the uh, intelligence, identified it, and then we used satellites and other means of uh, intelligence to look on the compound, etc. As you may have heard, we built a dummy compound so that mm -hmm. it, was a deep, it was a JSOC operation. Yep. Joint Special, Special Operations Command, Operation SEAL Team 6, and, and they did the practicing, but it was still under the control of the CIA, and the CIA director reports, well, to the president, as well as to the director of national intelligence, yeah. the DNI, G Jim Clapper. And so uh, they were very streamlined means, and the, uh, the NSC and the president was intimately involved with all phases of this. And as I say, it was a courageous decision to go in and, and take it out with ground forces and get the remains versus putting a couple 2,000-pound bombs on the target, which we have done yeah, in the, the past. Do you know whether the, the using the SEALs was the, the staff recommended or, or whether it was a recommendation or whether it's simply options offered to the president? Uh, that's a very good question. I do not have the uh, direct answer to that. I'm sure they came up as options. 
and, and I, there's no question if the president made the final decision. Sure, of course. There was more risk for failure than success. In other words, more things mm-hmm. could have gone wrong in that operation than went right. And and the dear Lord was very good to us because as tough an operation as that was, uh, they pulled it off flawlessly. Now they lost a helicopter due to a flight control problem, et cetera. But, but they got everybody out. I can't believe you get 40 guys out of there without having one casualty. That, that is just phenomenal. No, no, it's, it's brilliant. Is there any problem with our helicopters other than, yeah. I mean, it seems like, I mean, I understand dust and, and it's difficult environment, but is that just inherent in in, uh, in helicopter activity that, that it seems like we have a higher dysfunction rate with helicopters than one would like? Yeah, like Desert One yeah, and the that. other ones. So uh, there's no question that helicopters are difficult to operate, and particularly when you put them on the very edge of the envelope and coming in there at night trying to get in and do it quickly. Mm. And, and as I understand it, it was a flight control problem, and so he had to let the helicopter down slowly. Now, whether he got into a stall mm. and uh, uh, and it was a pilot error or whether it was mechanical error, uh, they really are operating on the very edge there. So. Yeah, that's inherently dangerous to do that. There were reports that were other people in the compound who were, you know, were maybe wounded or there, but we didn't take any of them with us. It was only Bin Laden's body that we left with. Are you surprised that we didn't take anybody else who was in that house to at least try and interrogate them or glean some information from them? Yeah, I am, Brian, uh, and I think it may have been because they lost the one helicopter and they had to send uh-huh. in another one that they were probably short of space and they didn't want to jeopardize. Their number one priority was to get bin Laden and to kill him and to then get out, and I believe it was to kill him. All right. Now, back to Afghanistan, you brought out the bottomless pit. Um, well, how, how, how does it change? How can we fix it? We had Michael Yan on before, who's done a lot of reporting in Afghanistan in Pakistan. He said, you know, it, it's going to be years before Afghan, uh, the Afghan forces are ready to, to take control of their country. How, how can it end? Well, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a great fan of Michael Young's, and uh, and and I'm I'm where he is now, and I think it's going to take too long, and so uh, I'm a believer that we have to go into a counterterrorism strategy, go after their leadership, et cetera. But we're never going to change, even if even if the Afghan military takes over, when we leave from those villages, now they're going to take the girls' school, burn it down, yeah. throw a burqa on those little girls' head. And, and so our idea of Jeffersonian democracy will never happen in these Islamic uh, republics. They do not want our democracy. Let's admit it. We've been at it for 10 years. We don't have enough money to rebuild it and make it into a modern society. So that's why I don't believe we're going to win hearts and minds by building girls' schools and wells, et cetera. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I generally, you and I have, a, I guess, come to the, a dreadful position where we basically agree with the Biden option, right? <laughs> Well, you know, Tony, I think you're right. Uh, uh, one, one always wants to be cautious before agreeing with Biden on something, but but apparently he may be right on this one. He may be very well. Look, we're going to leave Iraq, I'm sure. We probably ought to. But what we've got to admit, we are fighting an evil ideology. And until we admit absolutely, that, and, and unfortunately, the moderate Muslims are not exhibiting a great deal of excitement and and uh, happiness that osama bin laden is dead and uh, i just listened to greg palcott coming out of pakistan this morning and so we we must start taking it to the moderate muslims and say look you have a, an evil ideology in radical islam it is not a religion don't confuse it and it's an ideology as evil as nazism fascism and communism uh, a lot of people in particular in the administration do not particularly want to say that but that's the fact so if we don't understand what this ideology we're fighting is then how can you defeat it if you think that uh, giving them jeffersonian democracy is going to change them that's wrong and that's what uh, i've come to the conclusion uh, that that we must understand that and we must take it to them and say this is your problem right. you solve it general great to have you on the show thanks for your time we appreciate your insights as always Thanks, Brian and Tony. Thank you. Lieutenant General Tom McInerney, Fox News military analyst here on the